Hello everyone, let us look at a crucial face matching condition that one should achieve in order to make sure that you have efficient coupling. So, so far we have been you know discussing quite a lot um, in depth into the coupling mechanism and how and, and how to achieve this coupling to start with and then how to increase the coupling efficiency and how to uh, uh, understand co and counter uh, propagating uh, coupling schemes and so on. But then all of this discussion uh, hinges on one uh, key requirement and that is the face matching. So, if you look at our uh, face matching uh, uh, rather uh, coupling equations right, we you find this delta right. So, this delta captures the phase difference. So, we want this phase difference to be 0 right and how do we achieve that and also uh, what is the implication of having this phase matching on uh, the coupling itself. So, let us uh, do a, a, summer, a summary of uh, this phase matching itself. Right, so, let us look at the face matching concept. So, face matching is essential uh, to get efficient coupling. So, what we mean by face matching is delta equals to 0. So, this is the most efficient way of power transfer. So, this result in efficient power transfer. So, this this delta is nothing but you know phase mismatch it is basically this called phase mismatch is what we call this one. And how did you uh, how did we arrive at this uh, phase mismatch? Uh, initially, we had this idea between the propagation constant right. It is a difference between the propagation constant of let us say wave B and wave A right. The phase matching allows you to make sure that these two waves are traveling with the same beta. So, this is this is what we call phase matching right. So, um, in case that delta uh, includes the contribution from you know additional structure right. Uh, uh, it is not necessarily coming from the difference, but you could add you know geometrical uh, 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 changes in the structure. And then the phase, the phase matching of these two waveguides will be now you know uh, inc should include this um, factor from um, our structures also ok. So, that is something that we should do. Um, so, we need to consider all the contributing parameters. So, that is what uh, this this delta is all about. So, we, we should be able to uh, uh, not only take betas you know beta difference, but then you could have um, the structure dependent phase uh, changes right. So, just to give you um, uh, you know recap right. So, we, we did this. And there could be some you know other beta I will just say some beta. It is possible that this could be from structural change and this structural change could be a grating let us say. I will uh, we will we will quickly look at the grating. Um, as we move on, but you know you could get this uh, additional phase that uh, one can bring in by changing the uh, uh, the structural property right. So, that is something that uh, we have we have seen earlier right. So, uh, for a grating we know that it will be q times k right. So, that is an additional phase factor that this grating is going to bring. All right. So, we should not leave those out. So, the important thing is just make sure that any phase component that your structure may bring in should be incorporated. All right. So, let us uh, let us summarize some of the important 
concept in this face matching. So, the face matching is always symmetric right the face matching or rather face matched I would say face matched coupling is always symmetric. So, what, what that means is kappa a b will be equal to kappa b a star. So, the, the condition here is delta should be equal to 0. So, that is the perfect face matched coupling right. So, uh, this is this is also true right even when you have C a equal to C b a star is not equal to 0 and beta a is not equal to beta b ok. So, this is this is also uh, you know true when you have these conditions. So, when you have a perfect face matching we should be able to have symmetric right. So, symmetric coupling does not necessarily imply that the, the you have face matched condition right. So, this is something that we should also keep in mind. The symmetric coupling does not necessarily imply a face matched coupling. So, when there is a, a, a symmetric coupling right, uh, then it does not uh, uh, imply that the, the face match we have a face matched coupling ok. So, when we say symmetric coupling it is nothing but kappa a a b equals kappa b a star. So, this is what we mean by um, coupling between two different modes right that is face match right. So, the coupling could be symmetric. So, symmetric coupling is achievable, but it does not mean that you have a face matched coupling ok. So, you can go back and have a look at the equation right. So, this, this is possible right um, and it is also possible right. So, this implies right. So, this implies it is also possible that kappa a b could be equal to kappa b a while delta is not equal to 0 right. So, the coupling between two phase mismatched modes in the same waveguide right. So, you could have phase mismatch um, and you could still have coupling in between these two ok. So, um, the, the other important thing is uh, when you have the coupling right in the forward and backward coupling you will eventually end up you know making beta c will be equal to alpha c which is nothing but kappa all right. Um, so, this is the condition that one could use in order to exploit and find this uh, coupling constant right. So, for a co coupling or uh, co directional coupling right for a perfectly matched uh, uh, per face matched propagation. So, then uh, you could have for co for co directional coupling your coupling efficiency be equal to sin square kappa l right and the coupling length l c is pi over 2 kappa. So, this is perfectly face match right. So, all these things is face matched. So, we would add everywhere face match right. So, the 100 percent transfer from one mode to the other will be a odd multiple of that. So, this is nothing but odd multiple of L c will give perfect power transfer uh, 
And there are three uh, you know terms that we should all keep in mind when it comes to coupling. One is coupling efficiency which is nothing but kappa has to be large enough right you should have large enough coupling that is point 0.1. Next is phase matching right. So, phase matching is nothing but you should have very low uh, mismatch right the phase match has to be minimized. So, that means your delta over k should be as low as possible. So, instead of as low I will say it as small as small as possible right. So, that means ideally your delta should be equal to 0 alright. So, that is what you want. So, this is kappa. So, kappa has to be high delta has to be very low and finally interaction length. So, here we have co-directional coupling and you know um, counter directional coupling. So, uh, in, in either case particularly in, in co-directional coupling um, length should be properly chosen right this is very important because you have periodic changes right. So, you have a periodic change. So, you do not want your coupling to be too long. So, you want to keep it short enough so that you have the required coupling. So, if you if your lengths are not properly chosen your coupling will also be different all right. So, uh, these are all the uh, three important uh, factors that you should keep in mind when we talk about coupling uh, in the waveguide at between the waveguides right. Uh, so, that you can do a lot of uh, engineering um, based on this coupling transferring energy between uh, the modes and manipulate the propagation. So, with that we have come to um, uh, 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 an end of this whole series of uh, coupling um, lectures. So, we started off with uh, couple more theory had a complete understanding of the coupling coefficient how this complete coupling coefficients are de defined. We took uh, the field right. So, overlap and also phase content. So, this is the propagation constant. So, we try to take these two together and then made the condition for coupling it is not just the beta your field should also overlap. So, when the fields do not overlap the overlap integral if it is 0 then you do not have much to say there though you have uh, uh, reached uh, beta there. Okay. So, that is not the, the only condition okay. it is one of the necessary condition, but not the only condition. So, we looked at that and then we took that kappa and then looked at how we can use this kappa when the uh, waves are you know uh, there are two waves right and how the field is going to evolve right as it moves through um, the waveguide. And then we also looked at single waveguide and multi waveguide coupling and how one can numerically solve this. And finally, we looked at co and counter propagating waves and one of the important thing there is phase matching. And finally, we looked at the essential condition for phase matching and summarized the three key requirements that is the, the, the coupling coefficient, the phase matching and the length the interaction length. So, these two three uh, gives you a hold on controlling your coupling between different modes. So, with that we uh, we end this uh, uh, coupling uh, discussion on coupling. I hope uh, you have a better understanding now uh, in light coupling in these uh, waveguides. Thank you.